Hi, I'm Kate and I make junk journals and today we're going to make this page. So let's flip through this so we get an idea of what it is we're making today. We have this open flap and then a little notebook. It opens up to a big page with a tuck. And then on this side, we just have a pocket and a flip up. And then this clasps together. And the whole thing is a belly band with um, a card behind it. And the card has a flip and a pocket. Okay. So let's get started. So this is the page we made last time, and we're just gonna now decorate the back page. Once again, this is a cardstock thickness of paper, and you wanna make sure you're using something pretty thick to bear the weight, because this is gonna get really heavy. I'll probably reinforce the inside as well, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So the structure of this page, really, is this is all one big page, just kind of glued in belly band style with it folded. So I'm gonna need to pick out a long paper for this main page. Either something with more color or something a little more geometric, but I definitely want it to kind of have the soft pastel -y look so that it kind of blends. I'm gonna want a pretty thick paper for this as well. So this page was five by seven, so we're gonna cut this down to be seven inches in height. Okay, so this bottom page is almost all the way to the fold line. I will want room on either side of this paper. So I'm just gonna watch the length as I fold it and kind of guess, maybe like that. Then I can just fold it right next to that. And this one I'm just gonna fold almost in half, giving a little space from the crease. So something like that. Before I put this on, I'm gonna round the edges. And I'm also going to use that weathered wood ink just on the edges. So often I'll just do the very tips. Other times I'll do it more sloppy so that it kind of bleeds over and makes marks. And that add, just adds some texture. If you fold and do it on the cracks. And sometimes I just put a stencil on there and I just blot a little bit too. So there's more texture and it's not just stark white. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now I'm ready to glue this. And because this is a belly band, I'm only gonna glue on the top and on the bottom. So putting it a little bit closer to the edge of the book rather than the spine and press it down. All right, so let's start with the top. So for this one, I just did one flap up, but we're going to change it a little bit. I'm gonna get some avocado dyed paper and I'm gonna cut several strips to be just a little bit thinner than this flap. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange them so that they're staggered and then I'm gonna mark where the top will be. So I'll wanna cut it down about right there. And to put these together, first I'm going to lightly glue them, a small amount of glue along the top. And then I think I will round the corners. I will just dust the edges lightly. And that's really gonna make that be more defined. So now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew across the top. So it's kind of straight, straight enough for me. Now just trim a little bit. You want a little bit of excess on either side. And then I'm gonna just put a little dab of glue on either edge so I can tuck those long pieces behind the back so no one can see them. Then, oh my gosh, I totally did this upside down. That's really funny. But that's okay because I can just put it this way and it makes no difference. Good thing I caught it now instead of making the whole thing upside down. So we're gonna put it this way on this side and I'm gonna glue the entire back and press it down. We should probably add a decoration. So I'll just find something small. I love mushrooms. I mean, I hate eating them, but they're cute. Okay, so now we're ready to do the inner flap. 
So I'm gonna use some lined paper and I'm just gonna fold it once and just sort of watch and make sure it's smaller. And that's a lot of white space, so I think I'm gonna start it about here and just measure slightly shorter about here. And I am gonna do this one the same where there's just one flap. You could fold it a bunch of times, but because I have quite a few layers on this side, because this particular spot has these four papers, then two thick cardstock pages, then this page, then this page, and then a back page. So just once over is good enough for me. So we'll trim that down around the corners and dust the edges. So I'm gonna apply glue to the entire back, swirl it around, and then press that down. What do we have next? Okay, so we need a clasp, a foot pocket, and a card. For the clasp, I need anything that is a little bit thick. Sometimes if I can't find something that I really like, I'll just put a piece of cardstock and then a piece of lightweight ephemera on top of it. So let's do that. So this ticket is pretty flimsy, but we're clearly going with the teal theme here, so it will do nicely. And here's just a leftover piece from a file folder. So I'll make it a tiny bit shorter. Something like that. And then I want to cut the edges. Let's see if that lines up okay. Swirl a little glue on there. So now that's going to be strong enough to be able to hold that in place. And if I wanted it super stiff, I could always add another layer as well. Make it as thick as I wanted to make it as sturdy as I wanted. But I think this will work great. Now we just need some paper for this folding pocket. And I have this coffee dyed paper. And I'm just going to fold it, I don't know, about halfway up. So this one is just one flap. But I think I am going to add one extra fold since this paper seems to be perfect size for this. So follow my heart. And that's what my heart is telling me. Okay. So then around the corners again. Ink the edges. We're going to glue these three edges. And stick that near the bottom. Adding lace or ribbon at the bottom of a flap is really nice because it helps weigh it down, especially in this circumstance where it also has to hold back this piece. So I'm going to want to get something fairly heavy. Ooh, I like this. Let's go with that. So I'm just going to cut it about the length of the paper, put some glue down, smash it on there, lovingly of course. Okay, let's find a tag. And I'll just stick it in there. It's looking pretty good. Now let's do our tuck for the middle. This is made out of vellum words glued on top of scrapbook paper. But I think I'm just going to use this big butterfly. So again, just something thick. And then I'm just going to cut a straight line somewhere. And I'm not going to define the edges because I kind of want the whites to bleed together. Since this isn't actually the edge of the butterfly, it's just an outline. Okay, so I just glued right along that edge. And I'm gonna get some sort of paper to tuck in behind that. I have this super cute stationery. So I'm gonna trim this about there. And then I'm just gonna fold it once. And we'll round these corners too. Just a tiny bit of definition. Now we just have to make our card. So this is just a piece of scrap of paper with a piece of paper folded over with a pocket. I'm gonna go with purple on this one, mainly because I feel like I need some more purple so that we'll tie that in. So the size of the card really just depends on how much space you have. So I'll just give myself a little room on each side and cut it about there. And then we'll slide it on through and then make sure there's space on that side and then there will be space on this side and then you can mark where you cut it. Do, 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 do. Okay, 
So I'm gonna use this paper for the one that folds out. So I'm gonna do my top fold first because I want it to be longer than my bottom one. I like when the holes line up, that's cool. Okay, and then this one can just fold up and we'll line up those holes as well. And then I'm gonna want a little bit of space on the edge so that I can see the card peeking out. So maybe something like that. And we don't need anything to hold this flap down because it's being tucked behind everything. So it won't fall open unless you pull the card out. I'm gonna glue these three edges. So now we just need to find a card. Okay, so here's a piece of scrapbook paper, but it's double-sided. And I want there to be writing space on everything, and I guess technically you could write on that. So I'll measure it to be a little bit smaller. And we'll fold it over. Make sure there's a nice border. Oh, wouldn't it be fun to put something else in there? Let's do it. So I'll just glue three edges. And then this is a place we can put our most secret secret. And let's set a stamp. This one's so tiny, I just use my finger to put it on. There we go. I'll put that in there. This looks a little blank. Nothing a little washi tape can't fix. Hmm. We're just gonna have to cut out the word bright. Looks like our light is just gonna shine, just not brightly. Or, we'll just have it wrap around the back. There we go, that's cuter. Okay, so we can put our super secret card, close this up, and then we'll slide it in. And we did it! Look how beautiful this is. I'm super happy with this, that's so pretty. So let's do our final flip through. Here's our little notepad we made. The little notebook opening. Our tuck. Our pocket, that flaps open. And then our super secret card. So I came up with this a couple weeks ago and I have been a little bit obsessed with it. So I've made it two other times. So I'm gonna show you those as well. So here's another version. This is just one paper glued on. Then we have our notebook, our little tuck spot, same thing, vinyl letters over scrapbook paper. Then here's just a little vintage card over some paper. And this time I did a quadruple flip up. Look at me being so ambitious. And this is one of those Tim Holtz flowers that I love to use as clasps. This is some sort of tag. There's a playing card. And then I have a little pocket fold up and this whole thing opens up as well. Here's another one I made in more of a vintage style. So this one folds out and here's a little mini journal that I just kind of tucked in there. Here's that pocket and I just put this little tuck spot so I could shove a little paper in this tag. 
Then here is a fold up, a little secret tag in the bottom of it. This one I didn't put a tuck and it only has two creases instead of three. And then I put some tags in the back. This one just opens up once. So there's four different variations on this general idea. And now we have two sides done for our journal. I'm gonna leave the back side flat. And because this is such a heavy page, I'm gonna reinforce this spine with just a little bit of tissue paper. So I'll snip off the top and I want it just shorter than the page. Great. So I'll just use a glue stick and get that nice and glued. Put on that paper. And then I'm gonna do another layer of glue on top. So it's kind of decoupaged on there. And not only does the tissue paper add a layer, but so does the glue. And that's really gonna help hold that spine together. We do not want it tearing out of our book. Sometimes I put a thick strip of washi tape or I'll cut out and glue a little piece of Tyvek to the center before I decoupage either a napkin or tissue paper to the middle. You could also glue just a little piece of scrapbook paper or book paper or whatever you wanted there. Just something that adds another layer so that that is not gonna rip. And I'll use my ink to add just a little bit more dimension and maybe grab a doily and use it like a stencil to just kind of get some texture going. Just a little something happening on the paper and maybe even a butterfly. And since I think this page is so lovely, we'll label it lovely. So now this page is 100% complete and ready to be sewn into a junk journal. Thanks so much for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe, comment, and share my video. Thanks for spending time with me. And remember, if you use my templates, I really wanna see it. Tag me on Instagram at at Kate's Junk Journal. We'll see you next time.